بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي respected أستاذ أحمد حلمي بن محمد حسبي friends colleagues ladies and gentlemen Alhamdulillah, first and foremost, I would like to start by thanking uh, Darus Salam Mosque Management Board and Ustaz Ahmad Helmi for giving me this opportunity to be here this afternoon uh, to discuss about uh, something, a topic that is very important for us to know uh, and to be aware of in light of the many uh, fitna or terrorist attacks or terrorism related activities that is happening in this region and beyond. So I understand that uh, it's going to be a two hour program, uh, but I'm not the only speaker. Uh, after me, there will be another colleague of mine, Ustaz Muhammad Saiful Alam Shah. Do you know him? He will come and speak to you about uh, a very specific topic related to this issue. All right. But what I'm going to do is, inshallah, I have uh, I have to stop by two o'clock, at three o'clock, sir. Sir, three o'clock, right? So I'm going to share with you uh, some of the slides that I have, and then about forty minutes or so. And then I will leave about 20 minutes at least for some interaction. And you can, you can, uh, we can discuss and you can provide your comments. And I also want to hear something from you. And you can also even ask some questions to me. Is that okay? All right. Okay. I, I do not know whether all of you today have read the news, the latest news about the ISA arrest Wa alaikum assalam huh? Did you read The news today huh? Ada tak kita baca berita tadi bila buka surat khabar kita baca berita tentang penangkapan lagi beberapa individu eh, Singapura yang terlibat dalam kegiatan ataupun fahaman ISIS. Ada? Baik, kalau belum saya syorkan sebentar lagi, eh, all of you will need to read the news. That means you did not know what happened. Eh? All right. It's okay. The Singapore uh, government yesterday at 5 o'clock or so announced uh, another wave of arrest of several Singaporeans who found to support ISIS, right? And they have made plans to travel to Syria and to be involved in the conflict and also to join ISIS. And this is not a new case. Previously before this, we have heard several cases of arrest in Singapore, which both include Singaporeans as well as foreigners, right? And even last year, if you remember, mid of last year, uh, a very young Singaporean at the age of 19, uh, he was arrested because he supported ISIS and he had planned to travel to Syria to join ISIS. And he said, that if I do not manage to do that, what I will do is I will do attacks in Singapore. And I will assassinate the prime minister and the political leaders here. And he believed that this is something very noble in Islam. Eh? Very noble in Islam, right? And he believes that this is a jihad obligation. You understand? All right. So, <coughs> what I'm saying today 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are facing a lot of challenges today, the Muslims and the Islamic world, right? And one of the many challenges that we, have, we are facing today includes social problem, right? We have drug problems in Singapore, right? We have Muslims being involved in crimes. What else? And new areas like LGBT. You know what is LGBT? What is that? Huh? Yes, you know. And also one of the problems that we are facing today is the problem of self-radicalization. Self-radicalization and the problem of the, the, the propagation of extreme views or exclusivist views. Huh? And also, we have seen, as I mentioned earlier, that the threat of religious extremism and self-radicalization is on the rise. And this includes Singapore. Okay. All right. I think uh, all of us know that now ISIS is becoming popular, right? Why is ISIS gaining popularity? Now I want to ask you a question. You have to answer this. Huh? Okay, before that, I want to ask you, what is ISIS? And who are they? Can anybody volunteer to share something about ISIS? Huh? How about you? Can you give it a try? Yeah? Just say anything you know about ISIS. Correct, yeah. All right. So are they right or wrong? Huh? No, what do you think? What, what is your belief? Do you think that ISIS are real Muslims fighting for Islam or otherwise? Otherwise. otherwise. All right. Excellent. If you look up at the news every day, newspaper, you will find at least one or two stories speaking about ISIS and the attacks that they have committed. And we are very saddened with the fact that ISIS in recent months, especially when they have so-called proclaimed the Khilafah or the Caliphate back in June 2014, two years ago, has conducted many terrorist attacks, which include bombings, which include suicide operations, which include assassination, which includes uh, uh, beheadings and the like in the name of Islam. Uh, and especially in the month, in the last month, uh, I mean, in the recent month of Ramadan, right? We felt very depressed learning that there are several attacks that was proclaimed by ISIS in the month of Ramadan, which includes in the States, in, in Dhaka, and even in Medina al Munawwarah in Saudi Arabia, in the place where our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was buried. Right? And many other recent attacks eh, in this part of the world in the West, in Middle East, in South Asia, eh, and beyond. So terrorism becomes 
or continues to be a threat today, right? Especially those posed by ISIS. Now I want to talk a little bit about, these are some of the attacks that happened during Ramadan 2016. Okay. And the threat in Singapore is real. And I give you several examples and this, and the examples that, that I, I've given you earlier is the example, the recent arrest by the government of these individuals and before this has clearly highlighted that the threat is real and even escalating in Singapore. I'm not trying to make you scared, right? But I'm trying to share with you something that is real and we have to be very concerned of, right? Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about ISIS. You know, ISIS did not emerge out of the blue. Okay, it has its origin from Al Qaeda, right? And since 2014, they have claimed the Islamic State, where in Iraq and Syria, right? But the reality, the reality is number one, ISIS is a political movement, right? It's not an Islamic organization. Number two, ISIS is a terrorist organization and it poses global security threat. Eh? So from these two realities, we must understand that Islamic State, eh? because the other name for ISIS is Islamic State, right? You mentioned Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, right? They are now known as IS, Islamic State, or sometimes known as Daesh. Eh? Daesh is actually an acronym for the Arabic term for Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, which is Dawla Dawla al Islamiyah fil Arab wa Sham. Right? But although although they call themselves Islamic State, it is very important for us to know that Islamic State is neither Islamic nor a state. You understand? They are neither Islamic nor a state. Right? And this is something that have actually, as you mentioned, confused the Muslim communities. Okay, what are the strengths? The strength of ISIS does not lies only in its ideology. Yeah? I mean, does not only lies in its military capabilities, the territories that they have captured, but also in their propaganda and the use of media technology. You understand? Okay, now, now I want to share with you why are these Muslims, they are motivated to join ISIS? Why do you want to join ISIS? <laughs> Number one is, many of these individuals, in the first place, they possess this sense of identity or belonging. In fact, they wanted to become true or good Muslims. Like all of you, right? Like all of us. We want to be good Muslims. That's why we learn. We come to Darussalam Mosque. We go to school. We go to Madrasa. Like some of you. Is there anyone here that go to Madrasa? Do you go to Madrasa? Which Madrasa? Masal Junaid. Inshallah. Are you still studying? In which class? Pre-university too. Masha'Allah. See? Alhamdulillah, we have our uh, uh, Muslimah here who is a madrasa student. I'm very happy to know that because I myself is an um, alumni of Madrasa al -Junaid. Yeah, I studied in Madrasa al many years ago. All right. 
So they wanted to become good Muslims, but unfortunately, they are being led astray eh, to the teachings of ISIS that is widely or that are widely propagated, disseminated via online. Okay. Number two, these individuals, they always taught about the opportunity to become martyrs. What is martyrs? Huh? Shaheed. Yes, shaheed. Right? And they want to get martyrdom. Martyrdom is? What is martyrdom? Shahada. Right? And ISIS portray to the Muslim world that now it is the end of time. Right? And the Muslims, they must be united to fight the Dajjal. Right? And most important reason of why these Muslims, they want to join ISIS, is the obligation of living under a full Sharia or Islamic system. Because in Singapore, in Singapore, we are not living under a total Islamic system. Am I right? Singapore is a secular government. It's a secular country. Right? So these individuals in ISIS, they want to live and establish an Islamic uh, political system. Huh? Or Islamic uh, governance. Okay. So the power of ISIS actually lies in all these religious narratives, right? The narratives of jihad and so on. I will explain to you later on. So when we talk about ideology, <coughs> uh, when we talk about ideology, we are talking about the belief system, what they believe, the ideas that they develop in the organization. And the system that they have eh, that support their ideology and their belief system. And this is something that is confusing or confuse the Muslim Ummah because their ideology is based on Islamic and Quranic concepts, Islamic doctrines, right? Because they propagate jihad. And jihad is an Islamic concept. They propagate khilafah or the caliphate, which is an Islamic concept. They, they encourage Muslims to perform hijrah, which is an Islamic concept. And many other concepts, which I will show to you later on, that has been uh, emphasized and used in their belief system. So it is important for us to understand their ideology and counter them. Right? And also to understand the propaganda. Right. So I'm just sharing with you uh, some of the concepts that they have used in Islam. You can see all these concepts like jihad, bay'ah, ummah. You know what is bay'ah? What is bay'ah? Huh? Bay'ah? Can, can anybody share with me what is bay'ah? Anyone? Huh? Yes, it's a pledge of allegiance or oath of allegiance that members of ISIS, they need to take from the, from the Khalifa, which is now Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, their so-called uh, Khalifa. The concept of Ummah, Takfir. What is Takfir? What is Takfir? <coughs> exactly, right. The accusation of someone as non Muslims. So they practice Takfir. Istimata. What is Istimata? 
Do you know what is istimata? You want to try? Please. Huh? Yes. Istimata uh, comes from the word maut. Istimata ni fi arba'in khumasi. That means ma'nahu talabul maut. Which means to seek death. Basically, it's another word for suicide. Istishhad is shahada, martyrdom. Hijrah, you know hijrah, right? Dar Islam, al-wala wal-bara. Now, al-wala wal-bara is a concept that has been strongly emphasized in extremist, Muslim extremist organization. Uh, it's a concept of loyalty and disavowal. I have produced a book on this. Uh, it's, it's available at Amazon. If you want to get a copy, you can go to Amazon. And this book has been published last year, and it has it was based primarily on my uh, PhD thesis. Uh, so I wrote a book on al wala wal bara. So it's in English. So those who are interested can can get it online. Okay. So so these concepts including those at the other side. Yeah. For example, like this here in the rectangle boxes, these are concepts used by Al-Qaeda and also ISIS. But Al-Qaeda never used some of the concepts on the right. But ISIS propagates them. For example, Al-Qaeda uh, did not or rarely mention about Khalifa, about Khilafa, about end of times, about the end of time prophecies, prophecies of Yawm al Qiyamah, slavery, penghambaan, black banners, royal to suit, black banners, right? And many other concepts. So, all these are Islamic concepts that ISIS use in their ideology. Okay? Okay. How are these ideology being propagated? I give you an example. Eh? I've mentioned earlier that ISIS is very strong in their dissemination of their propaganda, especially they have produced this online magazine known as Dabik. Have you heard about Dabik? So Dabik is an ISIS online magazine. Uh, but it is a very dangerous magazine. Although it looks Islamic. And it was first published back in 2014. And I mean Kalau kita punya pemahaman agama tak kuat, eh? kalau kita tidak mau belajar dengan sumber yang sahih, if we do not have a strong foundation of Islam, we can be easily influenced with the contents of this Dabik magazine. Number one is because they use a lot of hadith, Quran and Islamic concepts. Number two, the, the production of Dabiq is very professional. I think, Amir, we cannot produce something like Dabiq. Eh? These are some of the examples of Dabiq. If you get hold of this magazine, please, eh, you can read, but do not follow. Do not disseminate. Because these are produced by ISIS. It's, a, it's their means of getting Muslims to join their ranks using the power of religion. You know, religion is very powerful. Eh? And they know that 
unless they use religion eh, they cannot get people to join them and that is why we, we have seen so many young people they are prepared to die anytime in any suicide operation because they believe in what has been taught to them with regards to martyrdom and being a shaheed. All right. These magazines are available online. If you Google Dabik here, anytime you can download Dabik. Okay. ISIS did not stop at Dabik. Okay. Recently, just I think last month, ISIS launched another online newspaper. Eh? Have you heard about this newspaper? And this is the first newspaper launched by ISIS in Bahasa Melayu, known as Al Fatihin. Okay, Al Fatihin, and Al Fatihin eh, was targeted to unite ISIS supporters in this region. Uh, in this region. Be it in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in in uh, in uh, in Brunei, in southern Thailand, and those Malay-speaking Muslims, right? You can see surat kaba bagi muhajirin berbahasa Melayu di dalam daulah Islamia. So recently, the Singapore government MCI banned this publication, and you could be arrested if you possess this document. And just, I think two weeks ago, I've also published a commentary on Fatihin. You can get this commentary online if you Google, I mean, if you visit RSS website, right? So I just want to share with you the, the propaganda by ISIS is very strong. Yeah. And it has, it has uh, really influence in indoctrinated Muslim youth and dia mereka telah apa merosakkan akal dan akidah anak-anak muda kita and this is a real thing because it happened in Singapore huh? because in the news yesterday the news said that Singapore has arrested, I mean, in detention today, at least 16 Singaporeans have been detained for supporting ISIS. And look at further indoctrination to all these documents. Right? In Twitter, in Facebook, Instagram, and other means of media and all these platforms are very important as means of propagation by ISIS. And I have mentioned earlier what, what uh, is depressing is the fact that they legitimize attacks, they legitimize destruction they legitimize even beheadings in the name of Islam and they said that beheadings is in the Quran. Right. And Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, a threat that are facing us today, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has ever mentioned in the hadith that 
in the end of time pada akhir zaman sayati qaumun akan datang satu kaum yang qira'un al-Quran mereka semua membaca al-Quran tapi pembacaan al-Quran mereka itu tidak memberikan kesan kepada mereka Rasulullah sifatkan mereka sebagai perkataan digunakan dalam hadis ini adalah sufahaul ahlam ahdathul asnan ha. siapa yang belajar bahasa Arab dia akan tahu Mak- maknanya sufahaul sufahaul ahlam ini orang-orang yang ada cita-cita yang yang apa yang yang bodoh You study Arabic. You study in the madrasa, is it? Right? In Aljunaid also. You know, sufaha jama' safih. Ma'nahu jahil. Al-ahlam, cita-cita. Ahdathul asnan. Ahdath asnan, ini bahasa balara. Ma'nanya orang-orang muda. Look at the profile of all these individuals. They are very young people. They have all this what uh, uh, imagination of having or bringing the glory of Islam back in the 21st century and beyond so we are facing a threat today from ISIS through the process of self radicalization which is which is a worrying trend today what do I mean by self radicalization individuals being indoctrinated eh? indoctrinated not through any formal procedures but just from what they obtain and read from the internet especially and and because of this process or methods it is very hard to detect unless somebody has crossed the boundaries and take the next step of involving involving himself or herself in terrorism related activities and this threat of self radicalization is is very prominent among our youth So I have mentioned earlier how can someone be radicalized self radicalization usually it started or it begins with a desire to become good muslims and that was the case of JI before and and other groups or even those who are not belong to any organizations or I mean terrorist organizations they wanted to learn islam but unfortunately eh, they did not go to the proper channel they did not proceed or consult the asatiza or the accredited asatiza that is why today this morning is in the news that uh, the ceo of moes mentioned that the accreditation accreditation of asatiza in singapore is going to be a mandatory it's going to be mandatory it's going to be compulsory for all asatiza in singapore to be accredited to be recognized by the authorities then he or she can teach islam in singapore most of these individuals they possess a very shallow understanding of islam right and of, and of course from the psychological perspective these are frustrated uh, frustrated individuals uh, who has actually intense have intensified the extreme beliefs and they are ready to commit violence and in singapore i have mentioned earlier that the threat uh, is real is not new because before isis we have we face the threat of jamaa islamia threat of gi self radicalized individuals and singapore is not immune from this threat we have cases 
and even <coughs> the Bangladeshi Bangladeshi communities here in Singapore, all, it's very small of them because majority of them are good people here, right? I mean, the fact that that ISIS ideologies has managed to target the foreign workers in Singapore, it clearly shows that anybody can be radicalized. Anybody can be influenced, indoctrinated. And this is the strength of ISIS. The strength of ISIS is ISIS has managed to influence individuals from a wide range of background, be it professionals, be it youth, the young and old, male, female, those in the middle class, those in, in the professional jobs. So they have managed to indoctrinate individuals through a wide range of profiles. So it is difficult for us to have a standard profile of an ISIS followers. It's very unique. In Singapore, alhamdulillah, we, in the, we are very fortunate eh, because of many reasons. I will try to stop in five or ten minutes to give you some uh, time for Q&A. We are very fortunate because of many reasons. Number one is, unlike Malaysia, or I mean especially Indonesia and other neighboring countries in this region, so far we have been blessed with no terrorist attacks. But that doesn't mean that it won't happen in Singapore. And the arrest, if you remember, some of you might, might remember, back in 2001, the arrest of the discovery of the JI network in Singapore was actually a result of a tip-off from a Singaporean who reported their activities to the authorities because they seem to be very suspicious. Alhamdulillah, we, we, we are blessed and we have to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us this peace and harmony in Singapore. I've traveled the world from the east to the west, from north to the south. And I can tell you that there is no country like Singapore, even in Saudi Arabia. I'm not discounting the, uh, the, the glory of Makkah and Medina. I'm talking about, about living environment, about political stability, economic stability. There is no country like Singapore. We are very fortunate. Because I've traveled to the poorest country in the world, the richest country in the world. And I personally even lived both in the West and in the Middle East. And I know what's happening over there. Second, we are very fortunate because we have leaders here who take this threat of terrorism and extremism very seriously. Both the political leaders as well as the Muslim leaders. Right? Right from the time of JI, the government consulted our Asatiza to help the government and the authorities here to deal with the threat of GI. And this has led to the formation of the Religious Rehabilitation Group, for example. We have our Mu'is, Islamic Religious Council of Singapore. We have the, the RRG and other Muslim organizations who are working very hard today, especially today we are we are, we are actually, actually today, 3.30, 3 I was invited to, to attend a briefing by the minister about, about some of these issues. But I have to decline that because I have promised to be here. They are also discussing the same thing on how we can deal with this threat of Muslims or more Muslims getting influenced with these extreme views about Islam. Alhamdulillah, I want to share with you a little bit about the RRG. We have a group of Muslim scholars here in Singapore, right? Who says Ahmad Helmi and his father, they are both RRG members. 
And the RRG has been involved in both rehabilitation of those uh, individuals in detention as well as community outreach. So these are some of the examples or initiative that we have come up with to deal with the threat. You can visit our website to know more about the work of the RRG. So let me conclude very quickly about, about in Singapore, it is very important for us to understand a couple of things. Number one is, like ISIS, they wanted to have an Islamic state of governance, right? Islamic political system. We are living in a secular system. And secularism does not necessarily mean negative. Right? And secularism does not necessarily uh, not or incompatible with Islamic principles. That's number one. We need to be aware of that. Number two, we must understand that we are living as Muslim minority. Right? And, and this is where we as minority, we need to uphold these values of tolerance and compassion in our community. And I want to touch a little bit about, about contextualization of Islamic practices. And this is very important. You know, Al-Islam, Salihun Likulli Zaman Wa Makan, right? Islam could be practiced anytime, anywhere. Even in, 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 in a secular state, even when the Muslims are minority, right? So what is important is for Muslims anywhere in the world to contextualize the practice of Islam in the environment where he or she is living. And there is no problem for us to be a good Muslim and at the, at the same time being a good Singaporean. So finally, I would urge all of you to take action with regards to gaining religious knowledge, right? Today we are very blessed because we have this uh, Asatiza recognition scheme eh? which allows our community to obtain religious knowledge only from the accredited Asatiza and from the reliable sources. And today, it has just been announced today in the news that the ARS system is going to be legalized. And this is partly in response to the increasing threat of radicalization and extremism. So ladies and gentlemen, what is your role, especially as young people here, is to protect yourself, your families from extreme ideologies, such as those being propagated by ISIS. Because we need to protect our country, we need to protect our community, and most importantly, we need to protect our families. And today is the first case in Singapore after, after more than 10 years, after more than a decade, that two ladies, Muslim ladies, has been arrested and given restriction orders for supporting ISIS. Never before this, that ISD, arrested a lady and it's become a family affair the husband the wives and even both the parents brought their children to support isis so be careful right so it is important for us to 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 be aware of the threat Report to the authorities, involve yourself in volunteer work in mosques, alhamdulillah, eh, and always promote this harmonious living within different people of different races in Singapore. So the trend is uh, very, is enduring. Important for all of us, not only the Asadira, not only people like me, but each and every one of us here, we have a role to combat 
ISIS and their ideologies, to counter their narrative teachings and ideologies. Because our main objective is to further prevent the radicalization of youth through education and community engagement. So every one of us here have a critical role to play. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength for us to face the challenge and the threat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless us with peace and amin living. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now I will give you 10 minutes if you want to ask questions, if you want to comment. Yeah, slakan. I come salam. You said that uh, I did some Yeah. But coming from narrative to the narrative from my side to the side, people are better on the Syrian side. Because that's the last week of what I see. The only problem is extreme or radical nation. Correct. That's true, extreme. Because to say that they are not Islam is completely wrong. We must accept the fact that they are Islam. We have different views. For example, I'll give you an example like in Colombia, the park uh, or in. Uh, uh, not an island. Yeah. We have what you call uh, what you call uh, Catholic, and this is not something new. As religious in different uh, religions, some something new. And secondly, coming from uh, the point of uh, Syria, sure. This only thing but political. Now we got migration problem, refugee problem in Europe. It's, you, you don't call, you cannot solve it because Singapore is only benefiting so called because what happened in Europe, sure. what happened in Syria. It's political. If you talk about Alawit, also in what happened in Syria, it's all political. Exactly. You can elbow two sides, political, uh, radical, and radical, you forget to mention, so only I said beginning, we got other two or whatever. The, the fragmentation of these people, you know, this certain group, or us group, but you talk coming up from their side, they say, do not dispute us. Better than the Alawit or the governing bodies or, you know, in Iraq. Iraq is not running by the Shia. And Sunnis, yeah. you know, you, you have to get it. You, you cannot be seen on one part and say it's not Islam. But you have to certify they are Muslim. Thank you. Can you make it short because you want to, yeah. I don't have time. Yeah, okay. Let me respond very briefly. Two points here, what you have mentioned. Number one, I agree with you that uh, they, yes, they are Islam, they are Muslims, eh? but their actions, eh? or some or many of the actions, especially with regards to violence, are not uh, in line with Islamic teachings. And that is the part that we need to counter, right? Number two, I agree with you that many of uh, the things happening in that part of the world and with regards to the problem of ISIS is more of a political thing, right? And I've mentioned earlier that they are a political Islamist organization, not Muslim organization. Thank you. Any other views and questions here? Yeah. Yes, uh, Abu Bakar Al Baghdadi mentioned. Yeah. Is, uh, from sector. Sector is us, okay. From my understanding, that Abu Bakar Baghdadi, uh, we we did not we did not know how he emerged, right? But all out of uh, the blue, suddenly he became the Khalifa, right? Okay. He uh, ISIS uh, claimed to be Sunni. Right? They are Sunni Muslims. And we, we know that Syria is a Shi'i oriented country or regime. Right? And one of the, uh, the other orientation or ideology of ISIS and the like minded groups or movement or even individuals, they cannot accept or against the Shi'i. Right? And this is one of. And that is why the Shia or the Shi'i are one of the groups that ISIS are fighting. So they not only kill the non-Muslims, they will kill the Muslims, especially the Shi'i, eh? and the Muslims who do not adhere to the economic understanding. So I would say that he claimed to be a Sunni. All right. Yes. Make it brief, yeah. Yeah, Islamic State. So the simplest solution would be that you present a real Islamic State to counteract with ISIS. Yeah, and how to do that? Yeah, uh, the second point.
why this is the Caliph system. So you present a real Caliph globally to, to counter the ISIS. So potentially most of the Muslim Duma. A big question, yeah, I understand. A big question here is in today's context, in the nation state system, eh, how and where can we establish one? Okay? A caliphate system, an Islamic state. Number two, before we go there, how can we define an Islamic state? We have to establish that first. Islamic state, what do you mean? What were the juries in the past, the ulama in the past? What were their views? Have we studied all the caliphates of the past? Right? Right from the last one, Ottoman and before. Right from the start of the caliphate after the demise of the Prophet. Have you really looked and studied the, the, the caliphates? And how or what system should be in place? In a caliphate system, it's very complex and dynamic. Especially today, where we are living, uh, or Muslims are dispersed everywhere, both as minorities and majorities. Even, even majority state or majority Muslim state, for example, Brunei, for example, Malaysia, Indonesia, or or in the Middle East, or in South Asia, right? They themselves, uh, they themselves struggle to implement a fully Islamic state of governance. Brunei, Brunei recently uh, proclaimed that they are going to establish the Hudud. Don't you think it's a challenge for them? So before we provide such alternative, right, we need to define and we need to really understand the complexities and the dynamics of this, this particular issue. Can I have one last, maybe from the ladies and Muslimah, if there is any question, because I have to stop uh, in two minutes to allow the next speaker to take because he also has one hour and he has to be at Jurong by 4.30. So I don't want to take his time, but I can allow one more comment or even question from the ladies. I will help, can I ask? We let them first, if there's any question. Ustazah, tak ada? Tak ada? Okay, yes. Yeah. What is your views about Singapore? Uh, is uh, our citizens wanting to support ISIS? Are they based on only religious or religious inadequacy of uh, religious knowledge, or also plus other like uh, dissatisfaction with life, dissolution with life? Yeah, there are many factors. Ideology is one of the many factors. People, people are radicalized. Uh, mainly because of the attractiveness or the appeal of the ideology. That is one. But that is not the only factor. At the same time, if you study the profile of these individuals, they have grievances. They have issues, either with the political system here. Some of them, they have even, uh, uh, they have even uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, family background. That is problematic. So uh, how do you reconcile with the fact that, that there are others, these factors and reasons? And as, as you say, right, to overcome that for Singapore, it's, it's more uh, awareness and religious education. Correct. Yeah, of course, there are things that, there are things that, uh, that we can help our communities, right? And there are things that are beyond our control, yeah. right? For example, I'll give you an example. Some of these individuals, they might, n they might not agree with some of the, uh, of the policies of the Western world eh, with regards to ISIS, for example, eh, or even the, de the decision made by these countries, which is Singapore, eh, in the fight against ISIS. Eh. These are just examples. Or they may have other issues, for example, eh, 
the, with, with, the, with the tudung issue or the hudud issue or whatever, right? So this, this could be eh, some of the triggering factors, right? Triggering factors. Those who have been, who have been influenced with IS ideology, eh, number one, they really believe eh, because of uh, the strength that ISIS uh, has in propagation of the ideology, right? But they have other factors. You, 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 let me, you, you let me conclude. They have other factors, but it's very complex because it differs from individual to individual. The profile of those individuals being influenced by ISIS is not the same. Zulfika, as we know, might have a different profile with regards to the young boy who have been influenced with ISIS. And, and, and other individuals, because there is no single profile of these individuals. So, uh, Ideology is not the only factor. So the angle they are taking now uh, is like more on educate, religious education of the people here, or ISIS. That is the path we are, we are taking now. And we are, we are going to continue to do that, because we feel that is, that is important. So if like, like that, that I'm not saying that, that other factors are not important. I'm not saying that. But there are things that we can settle within ourselves. And there are things that we cannot settle among ourselves. Uh, there, are, there, there, are, there are other efforts. Uh, because it's a, the, the problem is very complex. Uh, it's, it's very complex. Uh, and the, the way to counter and to deal with the threat is also very complex. We are doing in Singapore, eh, based on our experience dealing with these individuals, counseling them, talking to them, understanding their motivations, and at the same time, based on our research of ISIS. I personally have been involved in, 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 in research on terrorism for more than 10 years. And based on my experience in both research and fieldwork, eh, ideology plays an important part. What we do not discount the fact that there are many other factors that could lead people to radicalization. Thank you very much, and I hope that all of you have benefited from the talk. Inshallah, we will continue uh, if there is uh, any other opportunities. Uh, because I, I would like to share with you that uh, is Ustaz Saiful here? Uh, that there are many other opportunities for us to discuss on this topic which is going to be organized by other mosques in Singapore. I say this word and I pray for Allah the Most Gracious. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.